Hey there everyone, Rajat here. So, competitive programming is all the rage in today's computer science industry and most of the companies are hiring people using these competitive programming problems. So, in today's video, I am going to solve a live competitive programming problem that is there on CodeChef. So, CodeChef is a website where you can learn about algorithms and practice and then you can compete in competitive programming so they have been running a monthly competition where they upload a bunch of problems which you have to solve in your own time within a certain time period so as you can see here so this contest is running up till 11th of february okay so this contest will end at 11th of february so i'm going to solve this happy and contest problem and I'll show you the exact flow of how to tackle a competitive programming problem. Okay, so the intent of producing this video is to let you guys know about how to think like a programmer and how to tackle problems which are convoluted or how to reduce the complexity of your programs because that is uh, the core of competitive programming all you have to optimize is the runtime or the execution time of your programs okay so and you also have to get to the correct answer as well okay so you cannot optimize something which is not working so your program has to work and then you have to optimize it so here is the problem I am going to pause this video here and you can read this problem and try to understand it and if you can try to solve it on your own before proceeding on to the rest of the video. Okay, so if you have read the problem and you understood it then you might have gotten a brute force solution to it. So basically what they are asking in this problem is we have to find the total number of numbers in a certain range which are either divisible by a or b but not both and the total number of such numbers should be greater than this k if that condition satisfies we will get to the correct answer for this problem okay so this looks very similar to the fizzbuzz problem so fizzbuzz is a very common problem used by recruiters to weed out wannabe programmers so fizzbuzz is a problem where you have to figure out numbers that are either divisible by three or five but not both okay so this looks like a fizzbuzz problem here in place of three we have got a and in place of 5 we have got B but still uh, the approach is going to be similar so first of all I am going to write a brute force solution to this problem here is what I am going to do first of all I will create an empty array then I'll run a loop until number are lesser than n then I am going to divide that number by a if that number is perfectly divisible I am going to store that number into that empty array then in the second run I am going to run that for I loop again now I am going to divide the numbers with B if the number is perfectly divisible then I am going to search that number in that pre-populated array which we got from the first iteration then if the number is there which means that the number in the array is divisible by both a and b we do not want that so i am going to throw that number out of that array if the number is not there this means that the number is only divisible by b so i'm going to put that number in that array so by the time we are over with this second iteration we will get the numbers that are either divisible by a or b but not both and then finally we are going to calculate or um, check the length of this resultant array so if the array contains at least k elements we have found our solution so if there are k elements in that array we can output win or otherwise we can output lose 
So let me write a brute force solution first. Then we are going to submit the solution to this code chef UI. Okay. So give me a minute. Now be back. So here is the first attempt that is the brute force attempt. Okay. So here is the solution. And this is in accordance with what we have already discussed. And this is just the IO part. So this IO part can vary, but the solution is going to remain the same in whatever language you code, but the IO can be programming language dependent. So here I am using JavaScript and Node.js in particular because I am very comfortable with this language. So I am just going to use JavaScript and Node.js for solving this problem. So this is the solution. This is the entire core of our brute force solution and let's try to submit this thing but uh, before submitting let me tell you one thing that this solution can actually result in time limit exceeded or some errors like that because uh, this sort of redundant iteration can take time and this is something which we should try to avoid but let's see what happens with this program so but this is a brute force solution so let me go to this tab and then we are going to so let me paste in the code not this one but uh, this code okay and i have selected node.js here and Set, submit this let's see what happens so it is running it takes some time okay so we have got an answer correct but also time limit exceeded this means that our brute force program was running for quite some time and it actually exceeded the allowed limit of this 1.000 okay so now we have to optimize this thing so let's see what can be done about it so if you go back to the problem and here you can see the constraints okay so basically what happened is that for subtask 1 our program ran fine but for constraints which were in this range like 10 raised to the power 9 or 10 raised to the power 18 our program actually took some time to complete its working and its calculations and that was the reason we got a tle here so let's see what can be done okay so we are back to our program so now we have to figure out an alternate solution which has a complexity that is lesser than this so here if we have to figure out the complexity so the complexity can be like o of n here then again o of n here so you can say that it is in range o of n but still it that o of n range complexity is running twice so technically it's o of 2n so it is taking some time all we have to do is to get our runtime below the allowed limit of one second but it is running for more than one second okay so if uh, we think about an alternate solution what can be done so can we actually devise a mathematical equation which can readily provide us with an answer without doing this much of iteration and calculation so I took some time and I was able to reach to an equation which allowed me to compute whether we will win or lose in O of 1. So all I had to do was to run that one expression and I got the answer. So you will have to you know bang your head with mathematics for some time before reaching to prop solutions like this then you run those solutions against the trivial cases 
like uh, running it against 0, 1 and so on. So as to ensure whether your formulated solution is correct or not. So, so here is my revised solution. So this is the expression I have formulated in order to figure out whether we will win or lose. So it took me some time to reach to this sort of equation but it was not that hard to be honest uh, but I certainly uh, did take some time and this GCD formula is the formula I converted into code by reading how to figure out GCD. So this GCD is uh, basically calculating greatest common divisor and we are actually calculating greatest common divisor of A and B and then we are applying this formula. I am not going to explain this formula to you because I might not be able to do proper justice with the explanation but the gist is that First of all, we are dividing n with a so as to figure out how many numbers are divisible by a. Then we are figuring out how many numbers are divisible by b. Then we are going to add them and from that total sum, we are going to subtract twice the amount of this n divided by a into b divided by GCD A of B. So this will give us the total number of elements that will be there. Okay. So this is, this thing is exactly doing the same thing that we were doing here. But this iteration took some time here. This iteration is just not there. We are just putting these numbers in into an equation and readily returning the answer. So the complexity is now O of 1 here. So we can figure the solution out within O of 1. So this is certainly better than the O of n solution that is here. Some of you perspicacious beings will think that we are doing some iteration over here. So this is not O of 1 but technically it is not O of 1 but it is very close to O of 1. If we consider this uh, O of 1 solution, then this thing is O of 1. Okay. So now let's try to submit this solution to Code Chef. Again, it is listing our previous solution. And let's paste this new solution in and try to run this thing. Okay, now we have got an answer correct in both of these subtasks because now the complexity is just not there and our program exact actually ran quite fast as you can see here. So earlier our program was running in more than one second. Now it just took uh, 0 0.03 seconds to run. So that is how you actually tackle a code chef or a computer programming problem. All you have to do is to reduce the complexities, but reducing complexity is not that easy. For reducing complexities, you have to know the data structures, their complexities and the algorithms, their complexities and what algorithms or data structures you can use to reduce the complexities. But yes, do not get demotivated. It takes time, but slowly and eventually you will get there. All you have to do is to keep practicing. So here I have shown you how easily or not so easily you can tackle a real world competitive programming problem. I personally do not like competitive programming. I am not a competitive programmer, but I know that most of you guys who consume my content are new developers and one day you have to go through problems like these during your interview. So it's better to prepare for such topics because companies are going to ask about uh, this sort of uh, programming stuff 
from you and it's better to prepare for such a stuff so even if you do not like competitive programming i would like to challenge you to throw yourself at some programming if not competitive programming then maybe uh, writing some data structures and programs on your own so that you have proper command over these data structures and how to convert the pseudo code and the algorithms into a proper program and how to figure out the complexities and how to have the capacity to uh, reduce the complexity in case your machine is just not able to process the data with your coded algorithm so in case you have any more doubts about competitive programming or all or you like the content do not forget to comment your opinion in the comment section i will probably release this video when this code chef competition is over so in case you enjoyed the content and you want to see more such content in future please like this video and comment with your opinions in the comment sections and i'll see you around take care bye bye